from the book of Amos, the prophecy from Amos in chapter Amos, Amos chapter 3 and verse 3 says very easily and quickly, can two walk together except they be agreed? The answer to that is no, they can't walk together if they're not in agreement. If I tell you oh, we're walking down this stage and one of you is with me and you decided not to walk with me, we're not in agreement. That agreement is the key to life. And it certainly is the key to the church of Jesus Christ. Without agreement, you will struggle. Without agreement, you will constantly bicker and fight. But with agreement, you will see great things happen. Nehemiah knew that there had to be agreement to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. And he gave each family a section. Knowing that if they were faithful to build their section with the sections that connected to it, they'd complete the wall. But if one family decided, you know, we're going we're gonna to move our wall out about 20 feet and we're not going to do what we were told, how many know the wall would be wide open for the enemy to come in? So it becomes vitally important that every member of a local church be in agreement together with the leadership of that church. So today we're going to talk about the power of agreement. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, the power of agreement. In order to do that, we sometimes have to lay down personal agendas and come to a place where we can agree and see God's kingdom is first and must advance. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, it says, Again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that you shall ask, it shall be done by my Father, which is in heaven. If we could just get that one key verse, it would change everything in our lives. That if we come together and agree, God listens for heaven and responds. So that means there has to be agreement in the place that you work. There has to be agreement in your home. My wife and I years ago said every major decision, we're going to talk over and be in agreement before we make that decision. So it won't be her going and doing her thing and me going to do my thing, and we ask God to bless it. He said, if you agree, I'm going to come in your midst, and there I will do great and mighty things. It is the power of agreement. Say the power of agreement. In Matthew 18 and I won't read the whole part, but in the Message Bible it says this. Take this most seriously. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. A no on earth is a no in heaven. What you say to one another is eternal. In other words, you can't take back words you speak. Forget I said that. No, they ain't going to forget you said it. Hello. So you got to watch your words. Well, I just lost it in that moment. You got to forego those moments. You got to think before you speak. It's eternal. I mean this, he said. When two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make it a prayer, my Father in heaven goes into action. And when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be assured of this. I'm going to be right there. I'm going to be right there. Could you imagine a congregation that came together on Sunday morning and we all came in agreement? We're going to worship God. We're going to hear the word of God and be changed. God steps in and said, absolutely, it shall be done. In the midst of it, get ready because I'm going to manifest myself and do things you didn't even ask about, but I know you need them. It's the power of agreement. Come on, say the power of agreement. You've all heard of a flock of geese that fly in V formation. And when you look at nature, you see that many images of the same thing, flocks and schools and herds and colonies and packs. It becomes obvious that moving together makes sense. It makes sense that we cannot accomplish anything if we're going in opposite directions. So I'm saying this because I believe 2019 is a pivotal year for this church. 
You have laid a strong foundation, Pastor Lawrence. You have, have built people's lives. You have brought them to healing and structure and awareness and insight. And, and it's awesome. But what God's about to do in 2019, you're going to have to be in agreement together. You are not where you're going. And though we give God praise for everything he's done and how far the Lord has brought this church in, in six years, five years, and you're going into your sixth year, what God has done is not normal. But what God's about to do is not natural. And if it's not natural, it's got to be supernatural. The Bible says in Proverbs 30, the locusts have no king, yet all of them go out in rank. Isn't it interesting that God put in an insect this understanding that if we keep in order, things will happen? Israel was a ragtag group of individual slaves until Mount Sinai. But they became a powerful, interdependent group of 12 tribes that marched in order in battle formation. That's when God had a nation. They shifted from an audience to an army mentality. You can't beat us when we're all together. Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones, Ezekiel 37, saying, can these bones live? God asked Ezekiel, can they live? Ezekiel, being a wise man, said, only you know. You know what that meant? He looked at him and said, ain't no way. But he said, God, if you're asking a question, you must have a reason for it. So only you know God. And God saw something Ezekiel didn't. He saw bones that were separate, that were dried up, that had no, no life in them, that had no purpose, uh, seemingly purpose for being. And he, could, he said, God, only you know. And you know the story, but someone said, what God breathes on, God breathes on that which is only connected. If you read the story, he never breathed the breath of life until they got connected again. You see, if you're in agreement, you get connected. If you're in agreement, it's not Lawrence, Pastor Lawrence Church, it's your church, which means we're in this together, which we got to fight battles together that you can't be out there all by yourself. We're all in this together because we are family. We are family. There's power in agreement. God's using small groups, men's groups, women's groups, pastors, fellowships. He's bringing relationships together in the power of agreement. Relationships all stem from the relationship with God with himself called the Trinity, which is a mystery to our natural minds. But he said, let us make man in our image. And he was talking to himself really three people but one essence one being we call that the power of one in Deuteronomy 6 it says hear O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one one in nature one in nature when when an ambassador goes out to represent a country the ambassador doesn't have an opinion you need to hear me an ambassador from the United States that goes to Germany cannot tell the Germans what he's thinking about an ambassador only represents the country in which he's sent. And he always says, my country's view on this situation is this. My country's input into this circumstance is this. Because he represents an entire nation, which means if anybody touches that person and comes against them physically, he touches the whole United States of America. So we got to understand that we represent God and we have to be in this. The perfect relationship between three persons, the Trinity, is heaven's core. It's its value. It's its reason for existence. So when Satan rose up with his own agenda, God had to throw him out of heaven. He hurled him out of heaven because said in heaven, one exists. Agreement exists. You got your own agenda. You can't be here. Our society now is being built on what I think. But a lot of times what we think isn't as important as we think it is. What's most important is what he thinks. 
It's not my opinion. What does his word say? Because I can speak into the situation that's chaotic, the word of God, and it will bring order. See, sometimes we think government's the answer. The government has never solved hardly any problems. It's the kingdom that's the answer. It is the kingdom of God that is the answer. God made Adam and Eve, and he crowned them with the power of one. He said, for this reason shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one. And I know some of us think that's sex, and it is, but it's not just that. It's there are now a unit that cannot be separated. And even though you're separate individuals, you are one. And when one is not present, nothing is happening. And when nothing is happening, you're not growing together, you're growing apart. So the minute you say, hey, it ain't important what I think, it ain't important what I think we ought to do, it's important what God's telling us to do, we're going to get on one page, we're going to get together, we're going to be in agreement, and when you do, God steps in and shows himself strong. The power of agreement is demonstrated throughout the Bible. Solomon's temple was dedicated. And the Bible says that trumpeters and singers were, were, were made themselves as those that were heard as one voice. In other words, when, when a band plays, it's not solo that's important. It's that we hear one sound. We hear one sound. When we come together as a church and worship, we worship together. We're now going into the season where college football playoffs are coming. Hello. And you got your team. And it's amazing enough, but, but when your team starts winning, if you're an OU fan, amen, and you're playing Alabama, how many know we need a miracle? We need a miracle. But many of us men, when that happens... We'll shout, we'll stand up, we'll, we'll give our opinion, we'll point, we'll worship, we'll do almost everything. But when we come to the church, you know, we... It don't take all that. Well, it did for football. You mean football's more important than the kingdom of God? You be... Even if they beat Alabama, which I will shout over, Amen. But I ain't going to shout over the TV more than I shout over the kingdom of God. Yeah. Worship is vital. So when your pastor talked about worship this morning, my mind just started rolling. Because I, I wasn't even sure he was going to be able to get out of it. I don't think he was sure. Because he loves. Because worship attracts God's presence. And at the same time, not only attracts God, but attacks pride. Because whatever sits on the throne of your heart is what you worship. It's what you worship. And when the wrong thing gets on that throne, you're in trouble. Because if you worship money... I don't worship money, man. I need it, but I ain't going to worship it. Why do you think about it all day, every day? Until God becomes provider, you're depending on what you can do through manipulation. But when God's provider, he just shows up and miracles begin to happen. They sang as one voice. David said, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Oh, yeah, we, we've heard that. We even sing that song. But do we believe it? How good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together and they're in one accord. They're in agreement. They're in agreement. They come in agreement. You may not be in agreement with a lot of people, but on Sunday morning for two hours, you're in agreement. You come in agreement. You have that attitude. We're a church just going hard for Christ. We in it together. I'm a part of it. I do my share. I don't have to pray whether I tithe or not. That's not a prayer request. Quit wasting your breath. God said tithe. 
The government doesn't trust you and they take their money. They don't say, hey, would you like to pay taxes? I'll give the option you can pay it on the 1st, 15th, 29th, 30th, 31st. Uh, you late your first, you know. I, no, they, they ain't that stupid. They say, no, we want ours first. God always works on the principle of first. That's agreement. That's what we're, uh, how heaven works. God's always first. God's always first. Say first. first. Say God is first. God is first. Amen. So you bring the tithe to the storehouse. On the day of Pentecost, it says they were all in one accord in one place. That's when the Spirit of God moved. That's when the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost. That's when God said, I shall have a people, and I'll call them ecclesia, those that are called out. Let me help you, too. We're not just called out to be away from the world. We're called together so that we can go into the world. Being called out doesn't mean you're, you've left it and you don't care about it. There's a harvest. And, I, and I'm telling you, in 2019, going hard for Christ is harvest time. It's harvest time. You're going to see souls come into the kingdom at a level that you have never seen in the past. It's harvest time. Because there's some friends, there's some relatives, there's some co-workers, there's some of your neighbors that so desperately need this church. They're messed up. They're going crazy. They're headed to a burning, fiery hell. And it's got to be somebody to just invite them to this church. God will do the rest. But we got to be in agreement. you got to have like mind. The Bible says Philippians 2 have the same love, being of one accord and one mind. We got one mind. We're going to build the kingdom. I, I, I got responsibilities. I'll handle those. I'll go to work. I'll pay my bills and all that. But when it comes to the kingdom, we, one, we have one mind. We're going to build the kingdom. I'm going to invite people to church. God's going to do the rest. They're going to get saved and delivered and come to an encounter and get healed and, and baptized in the Holy Spirit. Who knows what God can do if we just do our part. Amen? Amen. Come on, say power of agreement. power of agreement. Three workers were laying bricks alongside each other, and they were asked, what are you doing here? The first man said, I'm laying bricks. And the second man said, I'm building a wall. And the third man had perspective. I'm building the greatest cathedral man has ever seen. What's your perspective? I'm going to church. Really? I'm a part of the church. I'm building the kingdom. My world's going to change. My friends are going to change. My relatives are going to change. Some of your relatives have been outside of church, outside of God, wide open, burning hell, craziness, amen, and this is their year. It's coming. Come on, say, it's coming. Even in our most difficult times of the, of the church, we had some financial situations, and we were tight. And people would ask me, how's it going financially? And I'd say this, we're facing a crisis, but we're on the edge of a miracle. You got to change your confession. You got to change your confession. Quit prophesying your future into existence. Prophesy your future into existence by the word of God. Amen. I may be going through a crisis, but I'm on the edge of a miracle. It may not happen today, but look out, tomorrow is on its way. You got to change the way you see things. How's your church doing? Oh, we okay. No, you're better than okay. Amen. You are glorious okay. Amen. You're magnificently okay. You got to come and see what the Lord is doing in our midst. The Bible says, unless the Lord build a house, we'll labor in vain. I ain't interested. Neither is your pastor. So we got to build it together. We got to build it together. Well, what, I don't have those deep spiritual conversations. I just, I just don't have the grasp of the word to do that. Well, you don't have to. Just invite people. That ain't hard. Hey, you need to come to my church this Sunday. Why? Because it's different than any place you've ever been. You got to see. In fact, this changed my life. Anybody can tell somebody that. If everybody brought one person, there's not enough room in this church in the next three or four months. Hello, somebody. Amen. Let me just give you very quickly four things, four elements of the power of agreement, and I'll be done. Four elements of the power of agreement. 
And you can find these, um, Genesis 11. The first is the power of speaking the same language. The power of speaking the same language. You can see this in Genesis 11, verse 1, the Tower of Babel. You know the story. They were making a tower to reach the heavens. They used bricks of stone and of tar for mortar. They said, come, let us build ourselves a city that reaches into the heavens so that we make a, may make a name for ourselves. Now, God had to judge them because their motive was wrong. But don't miss the principle because you see their motive. Their motive was to make a tower for themselves and to give themselves a name. But the principle is this. It says, if, one, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. When I started thinking about moving our church into North Tulsa, they said, you are crazy. You've lost your mind. You don't understand what you're doing. Number one, they ain't going to like you. Well, the people were fine, but the preachers didn't like me that much. But they said, secondly, you won't have enough money to run your church. I said, you are a liar because I know what God said. And I know God's people. And I know what we can do. Amen. 1,500 people later, they didn't know what to do with us. But God had a plan. We spoke the same language and things began to happen. Things began to happen. Amen. Secondly, the power of a plan. You have to have the power of a plan. Everything they plan to do will not, will, will, be, will not be impossible for them. Everything they plan, amen, everything they put on paper is, is going to happen. It's possible with God. All things are possible with God. you got to have a plan. Your church has a plan. Amen. But we're going to have a plan for a brand new front door. I'm not talking about a physical one. I'm talking about a spiritual one. There are going to be more people coming in that door than you've ever seen possible. All four doors are going to have to be open at one time. Amen. Amen. I watched it. I sat out there and prayed. Amen. It's, it's going to happen. Amen. But you got to have a plan. you got to have a plan. you got to see it. I remember we, we bought our building uh, over there, uh, and, and, and we, it was a huge facility. A thousand people could be put in it, and... And I had people coming to me all the time and said, you need to be wall, build walls on the side. I said, why? They said, because it's too big. I said, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. I saw by the Spirit, they're coming. Amen. The first month they didn't come. and six months they didn't come. But within a year's time, we started filling the building. Then we went to two services, and we were overflowing. You see, you got to have a plan, and then you got to see it. Not only do you see it with this church, but you got to see it with your personal life. you got to have a plan. I'm tired of just making it. I'm tired of not having any money after I pay my bills. I'm tired of not getting a promotion. I'm through with this. You got to make a plan. We've got to be in agreement. You got to be in agreement. You can double your income this next year. I wish I had somebody in agreement. I just spoke it into the atmosphere. I just spoke it into the atmosphere. Somebody's going to get a double portion this coming year. I don't know. You may be in line, but you got to be in agreement. You got to be in agreement with that. I'm almost done. Stay with me. Stay with me. Got to have the power of a plan. Secondly, there's power of passion. Thirdly, you got to understand the power of passion. Passion's essential. You got to have a passion for the things of God. You have a passion. I, I look for people's passion in worship because worship isn't worship until it's expressed. You can't look at your wife and I said, you know, 40 years ago when, when we had a wedding, I told you I loved you. And she said, yeah, but you haven't said it since. Passion has to be expressed. That's why worship has to be expressed. Worship has to be expressed. You got to enter in. It's down on the inside of you. I'm not just an emotional person, really. So worship is emotion? Well, yeah, it's kind of more a woman thing, really. Maybe you forgot we serve a 
God, who is the Father. Jesus. Uh, passion is essential. There's power and passion. It's interesting. It said, when the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all in one accord. The word one accord means passion. And that day, on the day of Pentecost, they had passion. And they were in one place. That means time, place, and order. Passion with time, place, and order, things begin to happen. God saw their hearts. Their heart says, I don't want to play church. So the reason millennials are not coming to church is they don't want to play church. And they've seen too many people for years play church. They say one thing in church, but another thing at home. They lift their hands and and give God praise, but they come home and curse. Everybody and everything. We got to see passion. We got to see passion. Passion has nothing to do with emotion. It has everything to do with your heart. You got to be in this thing. You have to be in this thing. There's power in passion. You know why this church exists? This man has passion. Why, Why is that? Because he who's been forgiven much loves much. He, he, your pastor could not just kind of be here. He could never be kind of a Christian. He could never be a tender of a church on Sunday, but live something else on Monday. That's not even possible with him. Because everything he does, he does with great passion. When he was on the streets, he had passion. Selling drugs, he had passion. He could build things, but God took that passion, turned it around, and gave him passion for the kingdom and the, and, the, and the building of the kingdom and the church, the house of God. He may be strong, but he has incredible passion and love for you as a congregation. Don't misunderstand those. Both work hand in hand. Amen? Come on, say passion. And lastly, as I close, you have to unite together with the power of relationship. With the power of relationship. Ecclesiastes says this in chapter 4 verse 12. It says this message Bible. I love it. By yourself. You're unprotected. With a friend. You can face the worst. Can you round up to a third person? A three stranded rope. Is almost impossible to break. One person, you're unprotected. Two, you can do quite a bit. But three, look out. You say three, well, that's three times stronger than one. No, it's not. Because uh, they, did, they did a strength test, and they found that a three-fold cord was over ten times stronger than a two-fold cord. It multiplies. It multiplies. What about four? What about six? What about ten? What about a congregation that's more than the day of Pentecost? 120 people in an upper room. What can God do? What can God do? These people that stood on this stage have gone through some stuff. They've faced some enemies. It didn't take them out. God used it to pull them in. And now they stand. Not perfect, but passionate towards the things of God. When leadership comes to another level, the congregation is about to experience an an ailment of God they've never experienced before. The step that your pastor took to license and ordain these people is essential for 2019. You mark my words. If you will come and understand the power of agreement, get rid of all the negative, critical, little cynical stuff, lay it at the altar and say, God, I thank God for my church. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my church and my pastor bringing the word of God. Amen. I'm entering into a level of agreement I've never had before. And we will see miracles in this house, and I will see miracles in my life. If that's your prayer, and you want to come into agreement with that today, stand to your feet right now. All over this congregation, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. 
put your Bibles down, notebooks, notes. Grab your neighbor's hand. Go across the aisles. Go across the aisles. Make room. Just find, find that person next to you. All up in the balcony. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not a part of this church. Well, look out. You came this morning. It's contagious around here. You may be in the place you're supposed to be. I'm not used to this. I'm used to more traditional setting. Well, look out. God just may be moving you to this place. Because there's some passionate, loving people that will make you a part of this family. You'll never be the same. Amen. Amen. Now lift a hand up to God. Father, all over this auditorium, my, what a sight. I wish I could, you could see what I see. God, I thank you. For the power of agreement. I thank you, God, that every test of the enemy is rebuked in the name of Jesus. Every word, every obstacle spoken out against something in this house is stayed by the hand of God. Every attitude must come down. Every imagination must come down. I thank you, God, that what you have built is your house. It's your house. So I thank you as we end this year, whatever needs to happen to correct something, to, to rebuild a bridge that was destroyed, to, to mend a fence that was broken. God, I thank you. Before this year is out, heal the wounds. Heal the wounds. Heal the relationships. Mend by your spirit. Pour out your oil now. Pour out your oil now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for a refreshing rain. A refreshing rain. A refreshing rain. To begin to sprinkle on your people and quench the thirst and the longing of their hearts, Lord. I thank you that it's always been here, but they've been closed. They've been shut up. They've, they, 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 they blocked it, but I thank you. Remove every weight, every hindrance, and the sin that does so easily beset us. We're about to run this race. We're about to run this race I thank you God I thank you God I thank you God as the anointing comes in this place I pray for worshipers, worshipers, worshipers as our hands are lifted Lord thank you for worshipers, worshipers they love the presence of God worship, worship we're privileged, Lord, to go in at the depth we've gone in. But, Lord, we're going to go deeper. We're going to go higher. We're coming in. We're laying things down that kept us back, that, that, that kept us blocked off, Lord. We're laying them down. We're letting them go. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for agreement in every household. I thank you, Lord, that every... Every unsaved spouse is coming into the kingdom. They're coming in, God. They have aggressively said, don't you even invite me. But they're coming in. They're coming in. Why? Because there's power of agreement. We agree. Every wayward child, we agree. We agree. They're coming in, in the name of Jesus. We agree. We agree now for financial breakthroughs. We agree now for financial breakthroughs. We agree now for financial breakthroughs. Give God praise for where you're at and look out. He'll take you where you need to be.
Let me help you. I just feel a prophetic anointing, but do not curse the ground you're standing on. Do not curse the ground you're standing on because you're closing the gate to your future. Give God thanks for where you're at. Learn what you're supposed to learn. Do your job and then look out. God will take you to the next place. He'll lift you to the next level. Favor ain't fair, which means God will overstep five people to get to you and open a way that no man can close. This is a new day. This is a new day.